Hi, Hi Evan, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Good, good. So, how was our morning session on uh, the product rule? Uh, I was really good. So, you introduced me to a new formula, um, which definitely helps uh, in different situations. It's not as long as the difference quotient formula. Um, so that's helpful, handy. Um, however, we did learn about um, like where it derives from using the different quotient formula and how like the proof of it, uh, which was really good to know. So that was good. And yeah. Yes. So I mean, this is our lesson number two on derivatives. We already learned about the power rule, and we also seen extension of power rule, and we jumped into the product rule, which is lesson number two. And in product rule also, we learned a few more things. That is, we could have product of more than two functions, and we could also combine it with the power rule. And that makes it very, very powerful. Now, <clears throat> with the product rule comes the name quotient also. Right? Multiplying two mm -hmm. functions is also as good as multiplying one by its reciprocal, right? So it becomes quotient in that case. So whenever we talk about quotient rule, which will be our major topic for this particular video, think like this. If I'm saying A over B, I'm also saying A times one over B, right? Oh, if yeah. I'm saying A times B, where A and B are functions, I'm also saying A times 1 over B. So you can always apply the product rule even when you have a quotient. Taking that B is to be right. negative 1. So that is the basic concept. With that frame of mind, you can move. Uh, because there will be some circumstances where you will find that applying product rule is beneficial than the quotient rule. There will also be cases where you can actually simplify your quotient so that even the power rule can be applied. It may look very complicated. All right. So you could actually simplify it so that power rule can be applied. So these are three major rules which some way or the other will be applied to find the derivatives. We'll combine them with the chain and implicit rule later. But to form the base, this is it. Correct? So let's now talk yeah. about the uh, quotient rule. Let me share the screen with you. And... Um, there we go. So this is, uh, uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Perfect. So this is uh, where we started in the morning. Uh, about half an hour back, we were on learning about the product rule. Now, you are a very quick learner, and that is why with you, one after the other, we are getting into different learning sessions. And uh, we'll give you time to practice today so that tomorrow we could have a test on it. Okay, mm -hmm. so get ready for that. <clears throat> so, as you can see from the given screen, we have already discussed what is product rule and how it can be derived. And then we also saw that the product rule can be modified and combined with something like a power rule, right? And then we had some examples on the product rule. Today, we are going to discuss the quotient rule. You were given a few questions based on the product rule which you have learned. Uh, you did share with me one of the solutions. Uh, let me take this opportunity to also discuss uh, about your own solution which you had said. Right? So there are few right. which uh, I would like to you know, mark in those solutions. So here is the solution which had sent me over to check. Now what I notice is that if we get to the answer, in that case, the answer is correct. So, as far as the answer is concerned, it's absolutely correct. Now, since you are my student, I expect you to get more than 90% marks. And as soon as you cross that hurdle of 90%, our marking system changes altogether. Now, we are not giving you marks, but we are deducting your marks. Do you understand the concept now? I am going to detect marks for your right solution since I do not want to give you 100%. And that is the strategy. So before, like, if a student is not so good, we try to give more and more marks so that the student gets around 80%, 75, 80. It looks respectable. But then when we see that there are students who are getting more than 90% marks, we become very strict. 
and the method changes. Now let me tell you where and how I am going to deduct your marks in different situations. So you began perfectly fine f prime x. This is your question. You want to find the function given to is square root of x times 10 minus 2x. And you need to find equation of a tangent line at the point P, which is 4, 4. Good thing you did was you tested the point that this point is on the curve itself. So there is one tangent which will pass through this particular point and the point lies on this particular function. You applied the formula mm -hmm. for the product rule and there it is perfectly fine. Derivative of the first function times the other, then the other function times the derivative of the next. And you did write the derivative perfectly fine. How? Oh, there is a mistake. In this particular case, you forgot to write the brackets. Now, when you write 1 over 2 square root x times 10, minus 2x is a different term. So when I read this, I read this as 1 over 2 square root x times 10, minus 2x plus square root x minus 2. So 0.5 marks can be detected for not putting parentheses in this particular stage. However, the next step is absolutely correct. But in case in this test paper, you were supposed to get 100% marks, your 0.5 will be detected just for this simple mistake. Do you, you get my point? Yeah, that makes so sense. Otherwise, otherwise, the solution is perfectly right. So I really congratulate you that within 30 minutes of my learning, you have actually answered the toughest question. This is question number nine. We were supposed to answer nine questions. Great job done. Perfect. So I think I can safely, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can safely begin with the quotient rule. So there you go. So first thing, I've already given you the quotient rule here. What does the quotient mean? Quotient means we have two functions. We are dividing one by the other. So we have a function f of x and a function g of x. I'm placing f of x in the numerator and g of x in the denominator. And I'm saying that the quotient. We need to find the derivative of a function where we have something like f of x over g of x. So let us say this function is f of x. So when we want to find the derivative, we're using the prime notation here. f dash x means derivative of f of x over g of x, correct? The formula which we are going to prove within two minutes is derivative of the first times the second minus first function times derivative of the second divided by the denominator is my second function square of that just the square of that denominator is that clear to you that is the basic yeah. now in this particular formula you have minus sign in between so in case you flip this, it is wrong. Do you understand? So you have to maintain the order. You have to maintain the order. You cannot flip it. Correct? So remember, first, we have to write the numerator derivative, and then we have to write the denominator derivative. Correct? And the denominator yeah. square goes in the denominator of your derivative of quotient function. Now, we could actually derive this using the uh, first principle as we did in the product rule. However, that is a very tedious process. Even in that process, you learned how we use the term f of x plus h times g of x, added and subtracted that term, remember that? And then split it into two yeah. parts and then got a result. Strategy was applied to get it otherwise. It is not simple. So in this case, what we are going to do we are going to use the learning of our product rule and from there we will derive the quotient rule the idea is uh, quotient is a product quotient is a product correct i could say it is f of x times times one over g is that clear to you so it is yeah. again product perfect it's still a product mm -hmm. So, keeping that in mind, what I'm saying is, we'll begin with the function, which is written as the quotient of f and g, correct? But we can rearrange, you see what I've done? I've brought g of x to the other side, and I've written this in the product form. So, what I have at this stage is that 
lower case f of x is equal to product of capital f of x times g of x right do you get the idea so similarly oh, so yes so now I, can apply the here, I could actually take this g and multiply it right there so we have a linear kind of a system to work with right but more important here is we have a product here to work with and since we have a product I can use my formula which we derive for the product rule. Once I take yeah. the derivative. So let me take the derivative. So now I'm saying derivative of my numerator, f of x is my numerator, is basically hmm. applied the product rule. Derivative of the first function times the other plus derivative of the second function times the first. You get the idea. Yeah. That makes sense. So the right side is now the product, and therefore we applied the product rule formula and wrote it down. Now, basically, we need to only figure out what is this f prime x, right? I need to just isolate f prime x to get my formula, right? This is what I need. Is that clear to you? Mm. So I will rearrange it. The best way to rearrange is shown right there. So we're saying this particular thing isolate this make it as your principle right so primary so it is equal to f prime x minus the other thing correct which i've written next step is that clear to you yeah absolutely clear then what i did was i know what this f of x is this is this yeah this is quotient so i changed this to quotient Correct. Mm -hmm. I replace capital F of X, which is the quotient of F and G. I wrote it. And then what? I only want to isolate this number here, right? So taking common denominator, I introduce one more step as you do. When you work with rational functions, take a common denominator and then simply cross multiply, bring it down. Correct. It becomes uh -huh. the equation. Do you get the proof for this? Brilliant yeah. proof without much mathematics and without the first principle. The whole concept, of, cool. yeah. yeah, the whole concept of first principle is hidden in it. Since what we did was we applied the formula for the product rule. Correct? Yeah. Can you explain me this That's concept well. and this derivation for the quotient rule? So with the quotient rule, you can use the first principle, however, it's quite tedious and long. So um, what we do is we make, so let's say let F, capital F of X equals F of X over G of X. And that can be written in the product form by writing F of X times one over G of X. So then you've got that into product form. So what we just learned in our previous lesson about the product rule, you can apply that formula to here. And once you go through all the steps, you would get the quotient formula, which is the um, derivative of f of a capital F of x, which is a derivative of f of x times g of x minus f of x times derivative of g of x and then g of x squared because you multiplied the cross Perfect. multiply. Perfect. Remember the order because if you flip the order of the derivatives, you get the we'll wrong, wrong so remember the order yeah. right so that's it about quotient rule right and you remember quotient rule and product rule kind of similar many questions could be done just by product rule. so here are a few examples for you we'll begin with example number five and six so use quotient rule to find the derivative f of x equals to 2x cubed minus 5 divided by 4x plus 1 and the second one is y equals to x squared plus x minus 1 divided by square root of x plus 1. In every question, square root will be there some way or the other. So you should be actually good at finding the derivative of the square root functions. Now, mm -hmm. this solution is also provided to you, Amy, here. So we have started with the very first function, which is solution of question number 5, right? So you take the function here. And apply the rule. Simple as that. Denominator is 4x plus 1. Put it there in the denominator. Square it. Perfect. First step. So don't think much. Just put the denominator there. Square it. Then numerator 
find the derivative of the numerator multiply by the denominator minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator that is how we are going to apply this particular formula for the quotient rule if you see it so simply as i am trying to show you then you'll never do a mistake and be very easy for you to recall and actually do it in your test paper do you understand this step yeah perfect now another suggestion is uh, at times these functions could be very complicated so the numerator you could find the derivative of the numerator separately you can say what is this term right you can actually calculate this on the side itself you can calculate this also on the side itself right do you understand once you do that calculation substitute the values and simplify now this was very simple example you could do it directly as i have done right hmm. always that is not going to be the case especially in examination so in examination the strategy should be this part should be done separately this part should be done separately and that's the first thing to do then write down the formula and substitute these values you get my idea yeah in this step then you so it doesn't look as like messy yeah. so what i'm trying to say here is let's move on uh, <clears throat> uh, okay now here there's another important thing to understand and which is uh, in the note form the note says we can rewrite the expression as follows to apply the product rule that is what i was trying to explain you the denominator can be written with an exponent of minus 1 is that clear to you right mm -hmm. and therefore you can apply the product rule directly with this plus sign in between and get your answer right you could do that uh, yeah so that's what we uh, talked about with the yes so one over activity is to actually do these questions with both the rules so that you get used to it examination test paper sometimes may specify that use product rule for this question is it okay can i just take a quick picture sure that'll be nice so i could do the last yes, exercise yes. makes sense cool thanks solution of question number 6 Now that is slightly difficult since we have a square root function in the denominator. However, we also need to square the denominator. So that is a simpler part, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. in this case, I will suggest no. not to apply the product rule. Do you get my idea? This is a perfect right, yeah. for quotient rule. So this is the question for quotient rule. Easily, when you square this, you get just x plus one, which is much simpler to work with. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the strategy which i was saying separately find the derivatives of the numerator and denominator write them on the side you get the idea this is a good mm. idea to write down the derivative of numerator which is x square plus x minus 1 and then the derivative of square root of x plus 1 on the side once you place everything in the formula as shown here next step will be that you write down the derivatives from the formula which you have developed correct mm -hmm. idea yeah just sub it back in that keeps the solution neat and clean easy for anybody to check and you will not have errors at this stage you can write x plus 1 to the power of half and to 1 minus half and to anything you want get my idea but yeah the whole flow should be neat and clean as i have shown you right Mm. that will ensure no mistakes and that is what we expect from you now since you are my student right now here <laughs> we have some questions for you so i like you to take a picture of this particular page where we have solution of question number 6 along with three more questions for you Now Amy I would like you to read these three questions and ask me questions if you have any and if you understood the question please tell me how will you solve them Okay so uh oh it says okay it says do not apply the quotient rule to solve, solve the following 
That is so true, yes. <laughs> so, do we it's use the product rule? Yes. So, okay. do not apply the question rule for these questions. I'll give you more questions for question rule also. Don't worry. So, tell me, okay. <laughs> what will you apply here? So, question seven. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve f of x equals 2x over x squared plus 1 at x equals 0. Um, so you'd use the product rule, do 2x times 1 over, oh, or x squared plus 1 to the minus 1, and then okay. use the product rule. Great. And Question number 8. That's it. Question 8. Find the coordinates of each point on the graph f of x equals 2x plus 8 um, over root x, where the tangent is horizontal. Yes. So we can make them like individual. So you can do 2x over root x plus 8 over root x. And Very good. Yeah, and then that root x is just to the half, x to the yeah. half. So you can just do 2x to the half plus x, 8 to the x to the minus half. Perfect. Yeah, and then you just do that. But that whole function needs to be um, greater than zero, doesn't it? Yes, because the, that is a domain, right? Because square root x means x yeah. has to be greater than zero. So if you get in the answer some other points, which have some negative values, don't write them in your answer. Right? They are not in your domain. Yeah. And tangent is horizontal means what? Uh, the gradient is zero. Perfect. So that is simplify this and apply the power rule. You'll get it, right? It looks like mm -hmm. a quotient, but see how simple it becomes, right? Question number nine. Yeah. Question nine. Uh, show that there is no tangent with positive slope on the curve of y equals x plus 2 over 3x plus 4. Yeah. So, so uh, again, we would uh, make that x plus 2 times 3x plus 4 to the minus 1. Perfect. Apply the product rule. Um, and then, I guess, if it's, it's we're showing that it's, there is no tangent with positive slope, so we need to make sure the derivative is negative. You're right. So that is how we are going to do. Most of the test papers will have questions like this. Find equation of tangent line or a normal line. That is the first one. Second, find a coordinate point which specifies a condition, which would be a horizontal tangent. And third, mm. show that the graph has no positive or negative, something like this. These are your typical questions in any test paper. So once you've understood that, it's very simple. Now let's move forward and <clears throat> let's see. Uh, right. So you've already explained me how to do these questions. I'm not sharing the solution. That is what you have to do it. I wanted to actually come to question number nine for you. Here is question number nine. Amy, can you read the question and tell me what are we supposed to do here? Yeah. So, um, Show that there is no tangent with positive slope on the curve of y equals x plus 2 over 3x plus 4. So, the solution. Um, right. So, you also did... So, we did x plus 2 um, and then made that times 1 over 3x plus 4. Yeah. Is that what so you what did? I did was, Emmy, let me just cut it short for you. The question oh, given right. to you is different. It is not the same. Your question was not to apply the question rule, okay? Oh, so... <laughs> Your question oh, so I need to apply the question rule? No, no, no. You don't have to apply. So I'm not sharing with oh. you the solution. It is the same question, okay? So, oh, right. you do not have to apply the question rule, okay? I am providing a different solution with a quotient rule. Right? Just explaining you. Oh. So when you apply the quotient rule, denominator is squared. Do you see that part? When you yeah. apply the quotient rule, the formula, denominator is squared. Now the numerator is derivative of the first function times the denominator minus derivative of the denominator minus the first function. So basically what you see here is since the denominator is always positive, if you get a constant in the numerator which is negative, then the derivative is always negative. You said See the point. Mm. So when you do it with your method, yeah. which is without applying the question rule, you should get such situation. Is it clear to you? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get. Yeah. This is not your solution. Okay. You have to do without question rule. 
Now here is the last question which I would like to discuss with you. Can you read the question please? Yeah, so um, the number N of the new COVID-19 cases per week in Toronto is modeled by the function N um, T uh, equals 30, 300, yeah. sorry, um, T squared over T squared plus one, where uh, T is less than or equal to zero or Greater no, than greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to eight. At the at what rate is the number of cases changing after one week? Perfect. So it says um, apply the quotient rule and substitute t yes. equals one. T equals one. So clearly, it's not a very difficult question. Very interesting, which uh, in today's time is very relevant, and this is kind of correct data also. Um, okay, which I've taken from internet. Now here, the idea is. When you apply the quotient rule, you get some number. Now you have to understand yes. in the first week, so t is one, just substitute t as one, and you get a number here. So that gives you the gradient at the end of the first week. Is that clear to you? So those are the yeah. type of application questions which we could have, uh, and they're similar to the gradient and rate of change and instantaneous rate of change questions, which we did earlier on in our introduction to calculus. So all our working for the very first chapter where we worked very hard, those were the great application questions. But now we know how to solve the same application questions in a much better or easier or faster way by learning these yeah. rules. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I thought I'll give you some questions based on question rule also. So now here are these eight questions for you to practice. You can actually take a picture of this and uh, tomorrow we will actually discuss the solution of the product rule question as well as the question rule questions. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we can actually, uh, I would like you to share with me what have you learned today starting from the product rule and the question rule uh, in today's session. Right, uh, so starting with the product rule, um, we learned uh, you can take, let's say, a function, um, two functions multiplied together, um, and what you do is when you want to find the derivative of that, you just do f, a uh, derivative of x, um, times g of x plus um, f of x, and the derivative of the next second function. Right. And um, there's then that we got the we learned about the extended power rule. So you can have more than two functions, obviously, um, in some cases. So in that case, you just do uh, derivative of the first one, multiply the two, add derivative of the second one, multiply the other two, and so on. Um, also, we learned about uh, if you have uh, a function to the power n, um, what you do is you apply the power rule. So you do n times f of x n minus 1 times the derivative of f of x. Okay. So that was all the product rule and those formulas. Um, and we also learned about the proof. And when doing showing the proof, we used the first principle. Um, so that worked out. Then moving on to the quotient rule, uh, finding the proof for that. You can also use the first principle and find the proof. Uh, however, it's quite long. So what you do is you take the function, um, you split it into the two parts by making one over, let's say, one over the function at the bottom, or that that would equal the function to the minus one. Um, and then when you do that, you got it into a product form, so you can just apply the product rule and derive that um, quotient formula. Um, so we have initially f of x over g of x, and the derivative of that would be um, f derivative g um, subtract f g derivative over g of x uh, squared. Perfect. So um, order is really important. So don't mess up the order when you do it. So if you, the numerator has to be where the numerator is supposed to be. If you switch them around, you get the wrong answer. So that's the key. And um, when you just write it down on the page, make sure uh, you take out like, uh, so when we're doing the derivative of some tricky ones, when it's like square root or something, um, take it out to the side, find out what the derivative is, and then sub it back in because it's much cleaner and um, easier to look at. Uh, and plus you won't really go wrong if it looks nice and clearly laid out on your page. 
Yeah. So that's all good. And um, towards the end, we did a lot of application questions, which would be the ones that come in the exam. So just uh, understanding what the questions are asking and which of the formulas would be best to use is the process that goes through your head when you do it. So beautifully summarized, uh, Amy, that was excellent. And that, that also shows that you have understood today's lecture. And uh, with that, I'd like you to watch some of my videos which where I've taken questions from previous test papers, questions could be very difficult at times, but with practice, it'll be very easy for you to do. Now, uh, yeah. we'll actually uh, take up a test on this particular thing so that we can show that the whole concept of derivatives basics is clear to us. And from there, yeah. uh, day after tomorrow, we'll move on to chain rule implicit. There are some more rules which will help you solve complicated questions. Right? And then we'll do curve sketching with calculus. That'd be uh, very interesting. So thanks a lot for joining Amy and uh, keep sharing whatever you want to understand. Keep posting me the questions and be on top of it. Okay. Will do. Thank you so much, sir. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank and you. all the best. Have a good day. The rest you of your too. day. <laughs>